Hopi and the Kachina. Long, long ago, our Hopi people lived in a world filled with wonders, guided by the Kuchina spirits. The Kachinas were more than just spirits. They were our ancestors, embodying the essence of nature and the forces that shaped our existence. This is text given by a, an elder speaking to a group of people. There are a bunch of children. And other older people, the community. In the ancient days, and, and Dirk's not going to read it like they were reading it. Okay. In the ancient days, the Kachina decided to share their wisdom with us. They taught us how to live in harmony with the land, the plants, and the animals. Each Kachina had a story, a lesson, and a gift for our people. Some brought rain to nurture our crops, others ensured the balance of the seasons, and some watched over the animals. Now, apparently, these stories pre-exist the emergence of Christianity by thousands of years, perhaps even 10,000 years. During special times of the year, we celebrate the Kachina with dances and ceremonies. The masked figures you see during these ceremonies, there were people dancing around and wearing outfits represent the spirits that bless us as we dance we connect with our ancestors and express gratitude for the teachings that have they have bestowed upon us the kachina are our guardians reminding us to respect the earth and maintain the delicate balance of life their presence is felt in the wind, the rain, and the changing seasons, guiding us as they have for countless generations. And there are people dressed up, and this was a big sort of event. Um, anyway, a child asks from the crowd, where grandfather did they come from? The elder began to share a story. Ah, little one, the Kachina come from a sacred place, a realm beyond what our eyes can see. They are not just spirits, they are our ancestors, wise and ancient. In the beginning, when the world was young, the Kachina emerged to guide and watch over us. Imagine a place high in the clouds where the spirits of our ancestors reside. From there, the Kachina look down upon us, and when the time is right, they descend to our world. Bringing blessings and teachings, they come from a place of eternal wisdom, a realm where the spirits of nature and the people intertwine. As the seasons change and the sun rises and sets, the Kachina journey between their celestial home and our earthly realm. They bring the gentle rains, whisper in the wind, and dance in the sunlight. So you see, little one, the Kachina have always been with us, guiding our steps and reminding us of the beauty and balance of the world. The child asked, but the Kuchina come from the underworld. The elder acknowledged, Ah, perceptive one you are. You've heard well. Indeed, the Kachina have a connection not only to the clouds, but also to the sacred underworld. Picture it as a dance between realms where the spirits move gracefully between the high heavens and the depths below. In the sacred underworld, hidden from our eyes, the Kachina gather strength and wisdom. It's a place where the spirits of our ancestors rest. And from there, they emerge to visit us in our world. The Kachina's journey is not just upward to the clouds, but also downward deep into the heart of the earth. So when you see the Kachina dancers and feel their presence, remember that they carry the essence of both the heavenly skies and the mystical underworld. They bridge these realms, connecting us to the wisdom of our ancestors and the sacred balance that exists in the unseen corners of our world. Tell us the story, the child asks. The elder shares the story. You have a keen mind. Let's tell the story of the Kachina's origin. Long ago, when our world was still taking shape, the great spirit Masa presided over both the heavens and the underworld. Masa decided it was time for our people to receive guidance and blessings from the spirits. 
So Ma Sa summoned the Kachina from the depths of the underworld and the heights of the clouds. These spirits were our ancestors, wise and ancient, and they held the knowledge of how to live in harmony with the earth. As they emerged from the sacred underworld, the Kachina brought with them the essence of the earth's secrets. They danced across the landscapes, leaving their footprints in the soil and soared into the clouds, carrying the hopes and dreams of our people. The Kachina, with their sacred wisdom, began to teach us the ways of planting, hunting, and honoring the cycles of nature. And so, little one, the Kachina come from both above and below, a bridge between the realms, bringing the gifts of the heavens and the wisdom of the earth. Their presence reminds us to cherish the connections between the seen and the unseen, the known and the mysterious. Are there good or bad Kachina? An adult asks. The elder pauses thoughtfully. In the vast tapestry of Kuchina spirits, there exists a balance, much like the delicate dance of day and night. While the majority of Kachina are benevolent, benevolent, bringing blessings, guidance, and maintaining the natural order, there are also what we might call chasing or mangui Kuchina. These chasing Kachinas, while not necessarily evil, are tasked with keeping our community in check. They may play playfully tease, instruct, or remind us of our responsibilities. Their actions are meant to encourage us to live in harmony with nature and each other. So you see, it's not a simple tale of good or bad, but a reflection of the intricate balance that shapes our world. In our ceremonies, we honor both the nurturing and challenging aspects of the Kachina spirits, understanding that they together contribute to the well-being of our community and the interconnected web of life. Then what causes bad things? Someone asked. The elder, acknowledging the question, responds. Ah, the question of why bad things happen is one that has puzzled people throughout time. In our beliefs, the challenges we face, the hardships and difficulties are often seen as part of the intricate web of life. It's not always about punishment or simple cause and effect. Sometimes the chasing or mongui kachinas play a role in bringing attention to aspects of our lives that need balance or improvement. They nudge us to reflect on our actions, to learn and grow from our experiences. And beyond the influence of the Kachina, the world itself is full of mysteries, some of which may result in hardships that are beyond our control. So while we may not have all the answers, we find strength in our ceremonies, our community, and the teachings of the Kachina. They guide us to face challenges with resilience, learn from adversity, and strive for balance in the ever-turning cycle of life. Where did they go? The Kachina, after their presence is felt during our ceremonies, return to their sacred realms. As the dance of the season continues and our community embraces the teachings they've shared, the Kachina spirits withdraw until the next time they are called upon. Their departure is not a farewell, but a continuation of the eternal cycle. They remain ever watchful, their influence felt in the winds, the rains, and the growth of the crops. The Kachina are woven into the fabric of our world, and their guidance echoes in the quiet moments of reflection and the joyous times of celebration. You see, they don't truly go, but rather become part of the unseen forces that shape our lives. Always ready to return when we seek their wisdom and blessings in the sacred dance of the ceremonies. Do they have leaders? An old woman asked. Indeed, among the Kachina spirits, there exists a special one, a leader known as the Chief Kachina, or the Tihutaka. This venerable spirit holds a unique place in our ceremonies and represents the collective wisdom and guidance of the Kachina. During our ceremonies, the Chief Kachina is honored and holds a central role in orchestrating the dance of the spirits, while each Kachina has its own attributes and lessons, the chief Kachina embodies the unity of their collective purpose. It's a symbol of the harmonious cooperation among the spirits, each contributing to the well-being and balance of our community. The chief Kachina, like the others, returns to the sacred realms after the ceremonies, patiently waiting for the next cycle when their wisdom and presence will once again bless our people. <clears throat> Have they a fallen one, a mysterious man? asked so they have players in this show, and a man walked up dressed rather frighteningly. 
The elder responded, Ah, stranger from the shadows, your question carries a hint of enigma. Among the Kachina, we don't speak of fallen ones in the way you might imagine. Our stories focus on the delicate balance, the dance between the benevolent and the challenging spirit. While there may be mischievous or teasing Kachina, they play a role in guiding and teaching rather than being fallen in the traditional sense. Our ceremonies honor the intricate interplay of these spirits, acknowledging their dual nature as both nurturing and at times challenging. If you seek deeper knowledge, then we shall speak later. <sighs> the The mysterious man seemed to shimmer in the shadows. He said, don't be evasive. Describe the evil one, the strange man said. The elder, sensing a shift, spoke quietly. In the ancient tales, we do speak of a figure, not as an evil one, but rather as a challenging force, a spirit known as Angusnasamtaka, or crow mother, Angus na samtaka, Angus na Angus na samtaka, Angus na samtaka. Or crow mother, she is not inherently evil, but her presence often signifies the need for reflection and change. Crow mother, with her black feathers and watchful eyes, moves through the shadows of our stories as a bringer of challenges. Her lessons are not without purpose. When she appears, it is a call for our community to examine our actions to face the shadows within ourselves and to strive for growth. And then at this point, rain started to fall. Rain, says the man, says the storyteller, cleanses the air and the earth. So too does the influence of the crow mother cleanse our spirits. She is not to be feared, but respected for the transformative role she plays in the ongoing dance of our lives and her son. The elder, acknowledging the mysterious man's question, answered, Ah, you speak of the son of the crow mother, a figure known as Angwusnakti. Angwusnakti. He walks with a delicate path, embodying both the challenges and the potential for renewal. As a child of crow mother, his presence is a reminder that even in the face of difficulties, there is the promise of transformation and rebirth. Angus na Quitsi, with his enigmatic nature, carries the energy of change. In our stories, he challenges our understanding and tests our resilience. Yet in his actions, there li lies the potential for growth and a new beginning. Beginning. He is not purely malevolent, good heavens, good heavens, Dirk, but rather a force that encourages us to confront the shadows within and emerge stronger, much like the cleansing rain that follows the storm. The man then backed into the crowd, and another boy asked if that was the son of the crow mother. The elder responded, Ah, young one, in the mysterious ways of storytelling, sometimes figures emerge from the shadows to guide our narratives. Whether that figure was a mere passerby or something more remains part of the enchantment of our tales. It is in the stories that we find reflections of our own journeys and the wisdom to navigate the dance of life. Soon a man walked up. Clearly he was the leader and he asked, tell us everything about the evil one. Chief, the figure you refer to as the evil one is a complex presence in our stories known as the crow mother's son. Angwu Snakwitsi, while not inherently evil, his influence signifies challenges and the potential for transformation. He tests our resilience and calls for self-reflection, urging us to confront the shadows within. 
It is not a force to be taken lightly, but rather one that demands respect and understanding. In our ceremonies, we honor the lessons brought by Anguusnakwitsi, acknowledging Anguusnakwitsi, seeking growth and renewal in the face of adversity. As the rain has cleansed the air, so too can we cleanse our spirits through the challenges presented by Crow Mother's Son. What's his name? The Crow, the Crow Mother's Son. The Crow Mother's Son is known as Anguusnakwitsi. And the Great Father, who is he? In Hopi mythology, the term Great Spirit or Great Father is sometimes used to refer to Masa, a powerful and significant figure. Masa is associated with the earth, creation, and underworld. As the keeper of the earth and its creatures, Masa is both a creator and guide. He is instrumental in the emergence of the Hopi people and plays a central role in their ceremonial traditions. Masa is respected and revered in Hopi culture for his contributions. This is important. And the chief asks, and the wolf, what is his role? In Hopi mythology, the wolf holds cultural significance and is often associated with guardian spirits. He's a great guardian. Protective qualities. The wolf kuchina, known as Mongwu, is one of the kuchina spirits in Hopi religious ceremonies. The wolf kuchina represents the spirit of the wolf and is believed to have protective and guiding qualities. Often symbolic of qualities such as loyalty, intelligence, and guardianship, the wolf kachina plays the role in embodying these attributes contributing to the symbolism within the Hopi mythology. The mongwu, the wolf, the spirit wolf, is the guardian and guide. The wolf kachina, the guardian and guide, embodied in qualities associated such as loyalty, protection, and guidance. Considered very significant, intertwined with the broader spiritual teachings of Hopi cultural and religious context. <clears throat> the wolf is a kachina, katsina, which are believed to be intermediary beings between the spiritual and human wolves. Mangwu, Mang Kachina, is a prominent figure in Hopi ceremonies and is associated with the spirit of the wolf. And was this wolf sacred? Each Kachina holds its own important and associated with specific teachings. The reference for each kachina is part of the understanding. The wolf kachina mongwu plays a meaningful role, often seen as a guardian and a guide across the entire pantheon of kachinas within the Hopi religious traditions. The wolf is woven into the broader fabric of Hopi cosmology. The review, Kachina spirits, intermediary beings in Hopi mythology. They bridge the human and spirit worlds. Mongwu, Wolf Kachina, the Wolf Kachina as Mongwu, is a guardian and guide in Hopi traditions. A spirit of the wolf, loyalty, protection. Crow mother, Angwu Tsnakwitsi, and Angwu Tsnakwitsi, her sons. Excuse her. Crow mother is a figure associated with challenges and transformation. Her son, Angwu Nakwitsi, represents a force that encourages self-reflection and growth. Masa, great spirit, sometimes referred to as the great spirit or great hope father in Hopi mythology, associated with earth creation and the underworld. Rain and cleansing symbolism. Rain holds symbolic significance in Hopi traditions representing cleansing and renewal, tied to the lessons of the Kachina. Challenges and growth, storytelling, mystery, respect, and understanding. These are the lessons of the Hopi and the Kachina. 
This is Dirk Jensen. You're watching the Dirk Jensen Show.